Greetings accounting students. Before we get into a practical demo, I think it's useful to just start with a theoretical overview. So keep in mind that when we talk about bad debts, allowance for bad, doubtful debts, that this relates to credit sales. So when we have a credit sales, because of the accrual basis assumption, we record the revenue when it's earned. As a consequence of that, we create an account called accounts receivable, which as we know is classified as a current asset in the balance sheet, because as a result of the credit sale, there will be an inflow of an economic benefit in the form of cash that will take place within 12 months. Now, the catch of offering credit to customers is that not all of the funds from these accounts will ultimately be received. Now, if we waited until we had confirmation that the customer was indeed bankrupt or insolvent, which would be the point where we could record the debt as bad, we could potentially be waiting for years. And if that was the case, we'd be breaching a couple of QCs. Our reports would fail to provide all of the relevant information, and thus they would not be faithfully um, representing the full amount owing um, from our accounts receivable. So this is where allowance for doubtful debts comes into play to satisfy these QCs. So full disclosure, I pulled this from the VCAR website from some sample material. So let's go through the three stages of this over two reporting periods. Now step one is we need to calculate our figure. And that is based on historical information where we look up basically what percentage of our credit sales and net credit sales have indeed been doubtful. And here we go, according to the additional info, it is 3% of the net sales. So we look at our pre-adjusted trial balance. We've got our sales less our sales return. So our net sales, credit sales are 98K. So we just multiply that by 3% and we get 2940. So that's our allowance for doubtful debts for this reporting period. So then we do a GJ entry. Our debit is bad debts. That's an expense because it results in a decrease in assets, our accounts receivable, along with a decrease in OE due to reduction in profit that gets reported in our income statement. And then we create a negative asset account called allowance for doubtful debts. I'm gonna abbreviate, but please don't do that on the exam because I've made this writing a little bit large, 2940. So in our balance sheet, we've got our opening balance. It said that right there, we get that in the, in the um, additional information. And then we just need to um, provide relevant information. So we do a new entry, one of the few negative figures in your balance sheet, less that allowance for doubtful debts. Two nine four zero. that is a negative figure. I know it's a bit messy. So therefore, our net accounts receivable will be $82,060. Okay, now we get to the next stage of the process. We've been notified that one of our accounts receivable has been declared bankrupt. So therefore, the account is irrecoverable. They owe us $550. Now, we've already recorded 2940 as a bad debt in the previous period. So now we need to offset part of that. We're not going to double record it. There is a GST component in that. So we divide that by 11. And so therefore we're going to reduce that amount owing to the ATO. So that's an entry for $50. Now, the rest of that 550, 500, comes off the allocation for allowance for doubtful debts.
And so therefore our credit entry is accounts receivable. Again, don't abbreviate like I am. So we're just gonna go golf am pro gap, I'm gonna call that 550. So therefore, now we need to do a debit entry in our negative asset. So on the 7th of July, we've got accounts receivable. Again, don't agree about like I am on the exam for 500. Now it's in this third and final stage where things can get a bit complicated. There's a few extra steps here. So let's just go up the top and get the information we need. We've got a balance at the end of the period of 78K. So we can just record that straight down there in the balance sheet. That's pretty straightforward. The next thing we need to do is we need to calculate the allowance for the period. We've got net credit sales, 125K. Again, we're going with that 3% figure. So we just go 0.03 times 125K. And that equals 3,750. That 3,750, that's our allowance for the period. And that's gonna be our final balance. So we're just going to bang that down here for now. 3750. So what we need to do now is we need to basically calculate our entry for end of July, factoring in our opening balance and factoring in that 500 that we wrote off due to Golf Pro Am going bankrupt. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to basically pop up the debit side, our final balance for the month, 31st, our balance was 3750. So it's like reconstructing. And if I add up these two debit figures, that gives us 4250. And that's going to equal what we have over here. Now, the mystery figure right here, let's just change colors that's going to be the amount we record in our GJ. So 31st, that's going to be our bad debts. And to calculate the figure, we simply subtract the 2940 from that 4250. So we just go 4250 minus 2940. So our amount that we're gonna record in our bad debts is 1310. 1310 here, 1310 here. And that's just the same as we did back in step one. So we're going to debit bad debts for 1310, and we're going to credit allowance for, no, I made a mess of this. I'm going to abbreviate again because my writing is too big with this uh, stylus. Again, don't abbreviate on the exam. And so therefore, in our balance sheet, just as we did in step one, but be careful because we don't put that 1310 figure here. We put the 3% of the net credit sales, 3750. So, Three seven five O oh, subtract that from seventy eight K and we're left with seventy four two five O. Oh. 